Good morning YouTube. Today I'm going to tell you all about why I really don't like the Mercedes S550 convertible. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan and this channel is all about the supercar ownership experience, buying and selling, maintaining them, DIY working them, and I can also help you with your supercar needs. So go visit my website, normalguysupercar.com, and there you can check out my consultation services and other things I have to offer to maybe help you with buying or selling a supercar or just questions you might have about them. But today, we're going to be reviewing this Mercedes S550 convertible. And let me tell you, I think it's actually kind of disappointing. It just really is not as great as some of the other Mercedes out there. So obviously I'm a bit more biased about Ferraris than most other brands, but I actually do appreciate some of these other brands a lot. And I think Mercedes has quite an interesting lineup that they offer. And some of their cars are just absolutely outstanding. But to be fair, this is meant to be a Luxo barge. This is a cruising, very plush, literally seat massaging car. I just find that the handling and the characteristics on the road are just really disappointing. If you're like straight up looking for luxury, this has everything you can think of in the luxury options. The appearance of it is just kind of uninspired. It's just kind of like a long turd. I mean, really, that's just kind of it. Everything about this car was just not something that I am a big fan of. And then the price tag is just absolutely insane. So this thing brand new would be about $140,000. Used as is this car, you could probably get it in the sub $100,000 price point, probably even in the $75,000 range, which is a lot of money and granted, you are getting quite a lot of options and luxury for that, but it's just, mm, I think there's better options out there. Underneath the hood, we got a pretty beefy 4.7 liter turbocharged V8. It does produce 450 horsepower, so it's pretty decent, but it does have quite a bit of lag. So when you stop the gas, it takes quite a while for the turbos to spin up. It does have a nine speed transmission as well. Ultimately, it scoots pretty decently, but it's still a very, very large and very heavy car. So don't expect to be winning a bunch of drag races with it. Now granted, you can get the AMG option, which bumps the horsepower way up to over 600, which I'm sure makes this car much more of a pleasure to drive. But as it's configured right here, this is kind of disappointing, a little bit frustrating. You would hope that it'd go a little bit more, have a bit more power, a bit more torque, but it just doesn't quite do it. Because this car is convertible, even though we have this absolutely massive rear end of the car, the trunk space as well, you'll see pretty lacking. Uh, you can't exactly fit a whole lot of anything in here. Don't expect to be putting a bunch of suitcases. I mean, it does go under there a bit, but ultimately that is a very, very small space. Ooh, yes, electronic stuff. Very nifty. The one really big win for this car is the interior. I think the seats are extremely comfortable. It's very nice. You actually can fit four adults with the seats moved forward a little bit. So we've been driving around with four people in this car, not a problem at all. And the technology in it is pretty good. So you've got like the cameras everywhere and you got parking sensors everywhere and it's got all the Mercedes Benz cool stuff. So all the technology in this car is very modern and good. So that, that definitely is a win. So we do have these nice quality seats, the good quality leather. They have massaging functions, which are pretty awesome. And they have heated and cooling, as well as a bunch of other things. You can adjust all the lumbar and everything like that. These seats alone probably weigh many, many hundreds of pounds. I'm sure they add quite a bit of weight to this car. But that's, I guess, why you're buying it, right? You want this luxury. You want that level of class. It will provide that, but it just kind of is ugly and slow. And so, you know, when you start talking in the luxury barge class, I just think you are much better off spending your money somewhere else. So for 2020, you have the new S560. It's a bit of an improvement over this car, although I don't know if it's gonna be that much of improvement. And certainly for the depreciation risk on this car, it might be better off if you're looking at one of these to buy it used. This car brand new probably was over $140,000, probably in the $150,000 to $160,000 range. As it sits today, it's worth maybe $100,000. More likely, it's worth closer to 80. dollars Getting close to half of the depreciation in three years. That's pretty bad. That's a really fast depreciation. And on top of that, the cost of maintaining this thing once it's out of warranty and if things start breaking, Mercedes parts aren't real cheap. Ah, oh, man, this starts to become really something that's not interesting to me. All right, we'll fire this sucker up. Ooh, yes, there you go. Very exciting. Yeah, let's wrap it a little. Again, just kind of uninspired. I mean, it sounds a little bit throaty, but just uh, not quite gonna cut it. Okay, we're in the Mercedes S-Class 550. It's the one thing that's nice about this is it does kind of turn it into like 
nice calm serene place when you got all the windows up and you're just kind of cruising the steering wheel is extremely light and the responsiveness is very slow <laughs> it's so squishy you turn the wheel and it just takes the car a moment to react you know like hi Fred you <laughs> I'll put you over in my seat in a minute here. <laughs> it's like sitting on top of a sponge. So on paper, you'd think, oh, this would be a great car. It's got 450 horsepower, but then you remember that it weighs a crap load. So I'm gonna put it in the manual. I don't want it to shift too fast. And here we go. To admit it, it is a comfortable ride it is it is like i mean that's what you're buying this car for and it's that's the thing i'm crapping out like crazy but it's because i am not the buyer for this car i just oh I, I, it was like uh giving me feedback in the steering wheel because i was over the white line i was like oh but, does it, it yeah, actually it has like, that yeah like i'll go over here kind of like the bmw i was not doing it now Okay, well, and we were driving it last night and it had like automatic brights. It worked pretty well. Like the brights would automatically turn on when there was no cars around. It automatically turn off when cars were coming. You know, it is a supreme grand touring car. Like you could tour the country in this car and you'd be very happy, but like trying to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. The brakes are okay. I mean, again, it's so heavy. Everything's just slow because it's so heavy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it scoots decently for that big of a car. So how do, how do you think this compares to the BMW M850? Uh, I think I like the way the BMW handled just a bit more. It was a little bit tighter. I think the comfort of this is better, though. Yes, definitely. Like the seats are really... I mean, the seats are... That would be the one thing, is the seats are excellent. Like, they are super comfortable, really configurable, and you go in here... And you push some buttons, and all of a sudden starts massaging you. Start my massage. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And it's also got air-conditioned seats. So I pushed a little button over here. Oh, there we go. Now it's like complaining about me being over the white line. Oh, <laughs> that's way over the white line. I've got it in sport mode. I can't feel much of a difference. Sport and comfy. Let's put it in comfy mode and eco mode, and really see how this thing. Are riding on air. <laughs> Everything's so comfy. Look at the hand. Oh my god, look how squishy it is now. <laughs> the, their, their responsiveness is. It's a, a slot bucket. <laughs> oh my god, it's atrocious. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna give it some, some beans. Rip it, Dan, rip it. automatically shifted up for me and yeah, that's not good. and so I tapped the paddle and so double shift it went second to third immediately like it's just here here's the thing about this car so we're driving around it's just so uninspiring like I, I'm trying to find something to be excited and like animated about because you know like I know YouTube wants that YouTube is like oh my god it's really... they want that right they want me to be like oh this is the greatest thing ever and I'm just like I can't it's just not it's so boring like this car is just boring this is a hundred and forty plus thousand dollars new. Yeah, so no way. <laughs> just no way you would want to spend that kind of money on this thing. It's just silly. Absolutely silly. Only thing that you're going to want this car for is if, like, you just want sheer luxury and you want to be able to, like, drink a cappuccino while thinking that your, your farts don't stink <laughs> and because it's got a Mercedes emblem on it. That's this, it. I would say that this is the perfect car to show up at a wedding if you want to show off. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing is, though, like, or it's, a class reunion. <laughs> but it's like when you see the car, you're gonna be like, uh, what, yeah. It doesn't even look cool. It doesn't even look all that great. I don't even know how's a turning radius on this. Oh, wow. Actually, that was a really short turning radius. That's good. It must have. I wonder if it has rear rear steering because that was really short. But it might actually. And it takes so long for it to respond on the pedal. 
it's like you you stab the gas and it's like uh, okay <laughs> you want to go fast oh guten guten <laughs> guten i go fast for you <laughs> the infotainment is good it's pretty good like this is all good the way it's got it all set up here some people love this little like uh wheel thingy and i haven't gotten used to it because i don't own one of these but I sh i'm sure if you did it's very you know intuitive and helpful I i've driven so many cars now and i've driven much better cars and even like the, the c-class mercedes and the e-class mercedes way more interesting than this car i would much much rather have an E-Class than this S-Class. I didn't even bother looking at the Zero 060 because it was not impressive. I mean, it just you can feel it slow. I'm gonna guess it's like in the upper fours, maybe in the five second range. It's just too heavy. Yeah, I would probably say it's up in the fives. Yeah. The, the conclusion is it is an uninspiring car. It is good luxury, terrible value, and it just, there's better options. There's just, that's the problem. If there weren't all these other options out there that are in the same price point, that offer the same luxury, but are much more interesting and fun to drive, then this would be okay. But because it's like, oh, here you go. Here's the, you know. It's another thing I hate. You let off the gas. And it's like, it still accelerates for like one and a half seconds. It's like, computer's like, Oh, you're done driving. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Yeah. Try and make it so it's like yeah. not jerky when you let off the like you know you don't yeah. want the oh the deceleration. Well, yeah. I would rather have that instead of like oh well now I'm gonna have to get on the brakes because you kept driving faster after I told you not to. Only reasons you will buy this car is if you just want luxury over all other concerns, and you like lighting your money on fire. <laughs> if you if you choose those two things then absolutely buy this car you're good to go somebody that just wants to show up and show show off some i've got a mercedes yes look at me i have a mercedes s class don't you be a show me <laughs> it's not as cool as the e class <laughs> i think it would be a much different experience in the amg i said that earlier i'll say that again i think that would be much more interesting to drive I'd be really curious if they tighten up the suspension, they tighten up the steering. You know, it's got over a hundred more horsepower. How does this com how does this compare to those vehicles that uh, you were you were uh, drifting with? No, those were way more fun. Really? Yeah. yeah. Much more fun. Whatever. This is not meant to be for me. This is not the type of class of car I like. So I'm pretty biased against it. I'm willing to acknowledge that. But if you own one of these cars, I'm sorry. Fred's like, oh, it kind of looks cool. Like, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of an uninspired look. There's definitely better looking Mercedes. Certainly at this price point, you can get much better looking Mercedes. I'm just not really enthused with it. I think that there's just much better ways to throw away your money than throwing it on this and way more fun options that are available. It's just kind of a squishy, meh car. Well, anyway, if you want to buy one of these, Good luck. Well, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed my very disappointed review of this thing. We'll be doing a lot of car stuff. You guys are amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet. I'm just, I got nothing, man. I'm, I'm trying to be excited. I just can't, just, all right, we'll do something else now.